Um, hi everyone, uh, I'm Hugo. Uh, I joined the Comdesca project um, earlier this year, uh, this year in March. So today I'm going to present you the PhD project and the work we've been doing so far. So, oops, like that. Um, sorry, we have the same problem than before. Yeah. So let's begin with the context. Uh, my work is to um, build the food and feed platform of Comdiscope, which is basically to know how can we make food out of residues. And we need to, to, to analyze if it's a good idea or not for France, if it's relevant, and if we can quantify it. So we separate the PhD project in those four steps. So uh, at the beginning, we need to, to know everything what is possible to go from a residue to a food ingredient. So to which residues do we start from, to go to which kind of ingredients through which conversion pathways. No? Um, on the second step, we will select the most relevant case for France and go deep into the biorefinery and process modeling in order to integrate that into a life cycle assessment that we will use as a tool um, to model the food and feed platform residual based for France. So those are the steps. And today I'm gonna to present you just the step one because of the state of, of our work so far. So let's um, begin with the waste to nutrition pathways that we found. Oops, we, um, we made this broad literature review. So the aim, the main goal was to find all the conversion pathways that linked the residual biomasses that were first, uh, prior presented by Shivesh to uh, the nutritional services. So we identify um, three categories. The first one is targeted compounds. This um, states for specific molecules such as methionine, DHA. Uh, MRC is the common ingredient that we know uh, that are protein rich, lipid rich, or sugar rich. And the last category, it more applies for animals because it's low concentrated nutrients and low quality. So in this first stage, we had no filter. We looked at everything, scientific papers, industrial literature, patents and ventures. So we found a lot of pathway. Uh, here uh, we have the main categories. We, we aim to classify the main, transver uh, the main transformation uh, as physical chemical or microorganisms or animals. So I'm going to, I'm going to comment them briefly. First, the direct enhancement. This stands uh, when we apply some soft process such as drying, milling, to uh, increase the nutritional value of a residues that can be used as a wall as an ingredient. The second one is cracking, is when you um, go to the molecular level to release small chain molecules or monomers out of the residual biomass. So like that, you can have sugars from wood, you can have amino acids from slaughterhouses wastes, for example. And the third category is when you extract a fraction from a residue, so in general, it's mainly proteins, and it can come from diverse streams. Regarding microorganisms, we found two main approaches. The first one is to direct uh, culture the microorganism on the waste that can be li liquid or solid. And the other uh, approach is to first transform the residual biomass into a suitable fermentation medium. This can be gas or, or um, soluble nutrients, for example. Uh, the last category is animal conversion because we can see them as a non-edible biomass converter in, uh, into protein-rich uh, ingredients. For example, the cattle, uh, it transforms grass into milk, basically. So you have as well the novel um, livestock, which are insects that are supposedly more efficient than that. So what you see is like you have a, a, we have a wide panel of different technologies, processes, but if we consider them as a first uh, intent to compare them as a black boxes, what goes in, what goes out, what we found is that uh, they mainly can enter into uh, four categories. Uh, either they enhance the residues, they crack it, they extract it, or they bioconvert it. So those uh, family, I'm going to detail them a bit more. They, they are different in terms of two dimensions. Um, in terms of the the structure, structural change they induce uh, on the residual biomass and in terms of the uh, final fraction of the nutrient recovery. So for example, if you take cracking and bioconversion, the final products, for example, sugars or milk, it's molecularly and structurally different from the input, which were wood and, uh, and grass, for example. On the other hand, enhancement and extraction, the final product is basically the same composition structure than the initial and the proteins they were already on the residue before we extract them. 
And regarding those dimension, enhancement and cracking, they have basically low, um, low losses uh, in, if compared to extraction and bioconversion, where a significant fraction will be uh, will remain on the as a byproduct or or as losses. Huh? So to, to illustrate that and to to go a bit deeper in the, in the concept, we we study the bioconversion efficiencies. So we have a lot of metrics to do that. This is ongoing work, and these are not final uh, uh, data. But basically, we when some can can check the mass balance, we check the energy balance, so the calorie balance and the protein balance. So what goes in, what goes out. So what we see is like this is common livestock. So we have a lot of background data for that. You need to give 30 calories to a beef for him to give you back one in its meat. So it's not that we call efficient, no. And protein, it's uh, 15, for example. So you see that you have some livestock that perform better than others, so such as chicken, aquaculture. And you see that the, um, the insects perform quite good in that sense. Huh? But we try to, to compare that to the new, what we call new food, so the microorganisms. And obviously, it's not calories and proteins. They can convert non-protein nitrogen into proteins, which is a, a good point in the sense. And they can convert uh, non-carbohydrates energy into carbohydrates. But what we see is like, considering just the balances, they perform more or less the same regarding energy, but they can be much more efficient regarding nutrition, uh, nitrogen use. The main point of this, of this slide is to show that bioconversion seems, can seem as a good option, but it will always be accompanied by, by low yield, uh, low efficiency. Um, so this is, those four functions are just um, a way to visualize and to have first tool to compare them, but real transformation pathways they combine several uh, cascading transformation steps. So to, to illustrate that, we made this scale. So on the upper part, you can see uh, the residual biomass that we classified according to their distance from being ed directly edible. So here it's the linear content, for example, and the quality. And on the right side, you can see um, the final products that we classified according to the concentration. So just to comment the few examples that we displayed, you can have proteins from food waste, through insects, for example. You can have DHA uh, that you extract from microalgae that were cultivated on the hydrolysis of the straws. So this is a much longer, let's say like that, uh, a transformation chain. And the same way you can have salmon from wood if you consider the whole chain. So the, the first um, comment that we can have is like the, the, the more recalcitrant the initial biomass, the more likely the, the need of transformation steps to commit to, to, to arrive to uh, edible ingredients. No? And the same way, the more concentrated the final products, the more need of, of, of steps. So uh, this is not always true because we can see that some, um, for example, bioconversion such as mushrooms or car, they can bridge a big gap in one single step. But at the same time, we saw that it might be accompanied by low yield, low efficiency. So um, we can state as well that the more steps, the more likely the drawbacks will accumulate. So it will challenge the sustainability of such fruits. But uh, this is just a, a first uh, way to visualize. We haven't considered energy, chemicals, and the potential synergies with other uh, platforms, because a byproduct is not always uh, about things and can be used for, it can have a function. So we need a full assessment. Life cycle assessment can be such tool to help us to do that, but it will be further work. Now I leave you with this um, conclusion. So these are the eight uh, waste to nutrition families that we found. So they all are. Um, they all start from a different feedstock. Some are more precise ones, such as slaughter slaughterhouse waste, and some are more uh, versatile, such as gas intermediate biorefinery. Uh, they all have a different development stage, and the more advanced one is the insect biorefinery. So if you want to, to know more, uh, we are uh, now writing a manuscript to, uh, with the objectives to publish it, so I will let you know. Thank you.